Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, I wanna talk about covered calls and how I'm using covered calls on SPY specifically to make a lot of money. And for me, I like to keep things as simple as possible. Um, so I wanna go over my honest strategy of where I have most of my money invested. So I have uh, currently, as you see on the screen, um, I have 83% invested in SPY. So um, now let's take that off the screen. And I just wanna talk about the covered call strategy in general. So. For me, um, covered call strategy is literally one of the best strategies, and I'm gonna blow your mind right now, okay? Get ready, Uncle Henry, it's about to blow your mind. The, probably never heard of this, okay? I would say 99% of you, and if you've heard of it, you know, kudos to you, you're a fantastic uh, little trader or you're just really educated here, but um, the truth of the matter is, did you know that a covered call is exactly the same as a sell put? Yeah, I know, it's crazy, but they actually look exactly the same. So here's what a covered call looks like, and here is what a sell put looks like. So if you notice, I don't know why I put a heart, but because <laughs> I love you, okay? I love you guys, I love you subscribers. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button because it also really, really helps me out and makes me super happy to keep creating content. But all right, so check it out. Okay, so covered call, okay, sell put. These two things actually have the same risk profile. So they actually look identical, okay? A covered call, the only benefit versus a sell put is a covered call actually collects dividends because you own 100 shares of stock and you're selling a covered call on it where a sell put, right? It's just, um, you don't have anything. You don't have anything in your portfolio at the moment. It's basically just an obligation of potentially having to buy a stock at the strike price that you sell a put option on. So now going back into my screen, you'll see that I am basically doing covered calls on SPY. Like right now, if I scroll down, you see the 441 right here? Okay, so let me explain to you what I'm doing, okay? And essentially, this is actually in the money, so what I'm going to teach you in this video is gonna be super interesting because, well, I'm not only gonna talk about my covered call strategy, but I'm also going to discuss how I roll higher. And rolling is a super important topic. It's a fairly advanced topic, but if you know how to roll, you are really going to be rolling in that dough. Am I right? Dough. All right, so, <laughs> you know, besides the humor, okay, it is really funny and it's really nice when you make consistent income. And that's all I'm about, right? I'm all about the consistency. I can't stand the people that are just going out there like a casino. They're like, I'm gonna buy some call options. I can't stand that, okay? You know, my strategy is so super boring. Like look, SPY 441 call option. And I'm basically selling a call option on my shares. I do have 3000 shares, so it is a whole lot of money. So if you have a small portfolio, please don't get discouraged. I literally started with $2,000 and yeah, it took me a long time. And yes, I added some money to my portfolio. And yes, I also had a really good return and I took a lot of risk and I went on a long journey, but hey, all of our journeys are individual. And uh, I truly believe that anyone can make this work. Like not in a day, not in a week, not in maybe even a year, but over a significant time period, option trading is literally the best investment. It's better than real estate because I can't stand real estate. I do not wanna own any properties, no thank you. I don't want any tenants calling me. I, you know, I love people. I'm kinda extroverted, but over the years, I'm basically becoming more introverted because, well, you know, it kinda gets difficult working with certain types of people. But for the most part, I love being a coach, so I don't have that problem, but, Essentially, I don't wanna be a landlord because whenever people call you, they just have like an issue, right? They're like, oh, my sink is leaking and my uh, roof is, there's a problem or the sink is clogged or I don't know, right? I have never been a landlord. I never wanna be because with trading options, it's actually very similar to the market, right? So basically the market returns 10 to 12% and so does real estate. Now, I know some of you real estate professionals are telling me that there's tax benefits, right? You can um, basically over 27 and a half years depreciate your rental real estate and pay less taxes. I get that. But also with option trading, you can make a 36% return per year, which with um, real estate, well, you can, but you're gonna have to buy, not in an A plus neighborhood, you're gonna have to buy in like a C neighborhood and you're not gonna have the best tenants. Of course you can fix and flip, but anyways, I'm kind of off topic. What I wanna basically discuss is Covered calls are literally it. I mean, you can literally retire just doing covered calls. I have a student named Denny, he might be watching this, but when I was working with him, he was just basically like, I'm gonna sell puts and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm a one trick pony. And he was making $6,500 a month and he did it literally super consistently. Um, and I'm very happy. And it's, I'm very happy that someone can just focus on their family and do other stuff and not get sucked into, oh, how do I do a butterfly trade? And how do I do 
a broken wing iron butterfly. It's like, well, there's a lot of strategies, right? But you know, if you just keep it simple, like covered calls, um, you can literally get the job done. You don't have to get it complicated. And honestly, the craziest thing ever is you can just trade covered calls on one ETF, which is SPY. Well, SPY and QQQ, I like both, okay? But my SPY strategy is super simple. I have 3,000 shares. Again, we'll put it up on the screen. I have 3,000 shares. As you can see, uh, my portfolio diversity is 82.97% in SPY. So it's quite a bit. And with the rest of the 17%, I'm basically trading spreads and I'm doing some other stuff basically for my Discord community because you know, I don't want to invest everything in covered calls. That would be a boring life. And I do want to teach people how to be more active traders. I don't think we should be the most active in the world. I don't day trade, I don't swing trade, but I get it. You know, it is fun to make weekly income. It's also fun to make monthly income. And if I just did a yearly covered call and I didn't do anything else, like you see this covered call is out until September 15, which is about um, two and a half months out, which would be 10 weeks out. I mean, if I didn't do anything for 10 weeks, life would be a little bit boring, but I'll be honest with you, a majority of my portfolio just invested in something super boring because I believe the boring stuff is what works. And I've literally seen um, the richest people ever, like millionaires, hundred millionaires, billionaires, they have the most boring businesses that they just do for like 30 or 40 years and that's how they become rich. So uh, the same thing kind of applies in option trading. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do, but the cool stuff, um, I don't honestly necessarily, <sighs> how do I put it? I've never seen anyone doing the cool stuff where they actually make good money. It's kind of like that broke guy that has a really nice car and he just like flexes and shows off. But everyone knows that if, if you look at his bank account, his bank account has like $5,000 or like 10 grand, which is like nothing right? But he's flexing a BMW or a nice car. And that's how, kind of how I felt growing up in Philadelphia. Uh, all these, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an immigrant. I was, my mom came pregnant actually from, from, I'm from Eastern Europe. So my mom came from, my parents came from like Moldova, Ukraine area. And uh, all the Ukrainian, the Russian, the Eastern European people, like they flex everything they got. They, you know, they got 10,000, they're putting 10,000 on a vehicle. I don't know. Not that smart in my opinion, but uh, I also get it because you only live once and flexing can be fun. It's not my personality type. I've never been really into that. I, but anyways, the point is that if you stick to SPY, which is basically my strategy, um, I think that you can do really well. So for example, what I'm doing, and yes, I promised about rolling. So let's get into rolling. I know I'm being very verbose in this video, but just want to tell you guys how I feel about this one strategy because it's so simple. Like I'm just trying to give you the painting, painting you the story, okay? Uh, <laughs> so SPY 441 covered call option, okay? So I have 3,000 shares here, uh, $1.3 million, which is quite a lot of money, okay? I get it. Uh, 441 covered call. If I take a look, uh, I'm getting a dividend, which is pretty nice. Uh, let me go into my history though, because I want to show you. Well, actually, I kind of forget myself. How much did I collect? So I want to go into my history. And again, I'm super transparent. Like I have nothing to hide. I have wins. I have losses. I, uh, I'm a normal human being. Honestly, it was crazy in, in my boot camp, which is not currently open. But I had a student that made, I think it was like 38% return in one week. And I was like, bruh, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, he did take excessive risk. He did put credit spreads on Tesla. Um, you know, but hey, look, I'm, I'm the coach and I'm not going to get jealous if someone outperforms me, quite frankly. I hope people outperform me because that's more stories. And I'm the type of guy, basically, a lot of people get super jealous. Those are super weak-minded people, okay? Super weak-minded people get um, very jealous. All right, I'm trying to get to the point here. All right, so let's go to the covered call. As you can see, I did have a covered call roll right here, which is 2250. So as you can see, I limit bought 1266 and then I sold. So this is actually a uh, debit. So I actually had to pay here um, it looks like I sold for 1191. So this is exactly actually what I want to teach you in this video. So I am rolling for debits. And although I did say in a, like uh, a not so long ago video that I only like to roll for credits, which is basically true almost all the time. Um, I think it's also okay to roll for a debit because just rolling in general is fantastic. Whether you're rolling for a credit, which is most of the time or rolling for a debit, I'm going to show you what rolling for a debit looks like. It's actually like right here. So I went from 435 to 441. Um, and I had to pay 2250, but I rolled up a lot of money. Like seriously, like six, uh, it was like $6 and that's 30 contracts. So that's like, 
uh, $18,000. So I paid 2000, basically 2000 bucks to make 18,000, which is insanely high. Again, just being super transparent, I wanted to look at my history. So if I go back to my SPY position, okay, um, again, getting that dividend, so that's cool. So what I'm doing right now, let me just show you an example. So I'm actually in the money, which is eh, not ideal. Uh, and I'm down quite a bit, but I'm not actually like down, down. I just have a covered call that's in the money. So I am just theoretically kind of down in terms of opportunity costs. And a lot of people get super upset when uh, their covered call is in the money. But to be honest, if you prepare emotionally for, say you buy a stock, right? And it's a hundred dollars. Okay. And then you end up selling a covered call, which is $110. Um, say that the stock goes up to infinite amounts of money to tens of thousands of dollars. Well, sure, you could have been as rich as Elon Musk, but if you think about it, in 30 days, if you bought a stock for $100 and it went to 110, you collected $5 in premium, you turned $100 into 115, which is a 15% return in one month, which at this very moment, ask yourself, are you happy with 15% per month? The answer should be yes. The answer should definitely be yes. 15% a month is more than the average stock market return per year. So are you happy with 15%? Yes. Now the stock goes to infinity and all of a sudden you're kicking yourself in the, you know, you know where, right? You're kicking yourself there, right? You're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do this? Oh, I'm a moron and I made a mistake. Well, the truth of the matter is you didn't make a mistake. The only thing is you're emotionally upset because you could have made more money, but that's just a psychological bias. That doesn't actually mean anything because you made 15%, you should be happy, okay? And by the way, I actually have a story about you know, actually, when I worked at Goldman Sachs, it was it was a really cool story. But um, my very first day, uh, basically at Goldman Sachs, a lot of what I did, I worked in private wealth management in Los Angeles, and there was lots of movie stars and Hollywood actors and CEOs and tech giants and everything in between, but mostly actors, right? Because it's Los Angeles. And it was mostly like Hollywood. This was back in uh, 2016. Okay, so in 2016. Basically, I was sitting there next to the financial advisor who was managing about $3 billion. The guy doesn't do anything. He just puts his feet up on the desk and just uh, BSs with clients that give him calls, right? And uh, I actually found this really interesting because, you know, I was studying like psychology and game theory and economics and like other stuff in college. And the interesting part was that he got a call, right, from a client who... Um, had ended up, I think he bought call options. I don't remember the exact situation of how he made the money, but he made $600,000. And for the client, that wasn't that much because I think he had $10 million. So $600,000 is still not a chunk change. Like you can buy uh, two Lamborghinis or you know maybe you can like travel Europe like, like I am, but it doesn't cost 600,000 to travel to Europe. You can do it on a lot less. Uh, but anyway, so he made $600,000 and uh, he was like, oh man, I made all this money. Um, I should do something risky with it because now I made, he, he was a new client. He's like, now I made $600,000. I should use this money um, in a risky way because now I'm playing with the house money. Well, sort of, like you are playing with the house money, but you know, the guy thinks he's, he's playing with house money, but me and you know right now, at this moment, we know if you have 10 million and you made 600,000, now you have 10 million, 600,000 and you just, close out that position and run, you have 600,000. But the guy doesn't see it that way. He sees it as, oh, I made $600,000 so in a short amount of period of time, I gotta use a 600K to gamble with it. So anyways, the mentality was, you know, psychological bias. And that's what I mean about covered calls. Like a lot of people, they lose out on the upside and they're like, oh, I'm in trouble. Why did I do that? I'm such a moron. It's like, no, you're fine. You came into that position expecting to make X amount of percent, say 15, and now it is, didn't make, now it made you 15, but it could have made you 50, and you're upset. It's like, well, <laughs> don't change your mind, okay? If you were happy with 15, be happy with 15, stop being greedy. And look, I'm greedy myself. I love money, I love it. Um, but, you know, I also understand psychological biases. So, in terms of the covered call strategy, I guess this is like mindset around covered call strategy. What you wanna do is you wanna pick a, strike price that you're happy selling off the stock and then set it and forget it. Now, on the other hand, you can also roll, okay? So this is the part we're gonna talk about rolling. I know this is a long video, but um, 
I'm doing a different style. If you like the style of me talking and kind of being a little different on camera, obviously I don't have a script and most YouTubers are always staring at the camera like this and reading off the screen. And I'm not doing that because I'm just talking normally, naturally without any, <laughs> any script or any preparation. I just wanna be as authentic as possible so I can be the number one option YouTuber <laughs> in the world. <laughs> That's my goal, okay? I do this for fun and passion, so uh, obviously. It's like something I love to do. So anyways, I wanna show you what uh, rolling up the 440, leave a like button, it freaking helps, okay? I know it said that, but if we, can, if we can make the likes really high in this video, I will, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You tell me what you want me to do, I'm gonna do it, okay? I like, I like them likes, okay? So 441, look, it's as simple as this. Like, I'm gonna go to roll this position from 441, um, and I'm gonna roll it from 915 to, get my serious face on, uh, to, I like traditional Friday expiration. So the third Friday of every month, as you can see, it's November 17, December 15. That's not a traditional expiration. December 29th is not. So we'll go to January 19. Okay. Um, I don't even have to go that far. I can go from, from September to, to November, right? That's an extra like 60 days or something. Right. So what I can do is I can move from 441 to say 440, just to keep the math number, uh, the number is easy. 441, oh, I can't, because uh, they don't have 446, but let's do 445. So as you can see here, I'm collecting a huge credit, $11,000, um, but then also what's happening is I'm moving up by $4. So um, not only am I collecting a credit, but um, SPY is currently in the money at about 44, you know, four, uh, $443 and 98 cents. Um, so now I'm moving from 441 to 445. So I'm moving up by $4, there's 30 contracts, that is $12,000. So I'm making $12,000 in potential upside. It's in the money by um, about eight grand. So I'd be making eight grand like that, but then 4,000 would be potentially earned. You know what I mean? If it went to 445. Right, so basically I'm giving myself the potential to make 12 grand more, and then the total credit is 11 grand. So that's like 12 plus 11, it's $23,000, which is uh, quite nice, right? So $23,000 um, is my potential. And then as you can see here, my time change is two months. So in literally an extra two months, I'm making an extra $23,000. So, um, I mean, granted, it's not a whole lot of money in comparison to my portfolio, but it's super steady, it's super safe, and it's SPY. There's not a whole lot of volatility. This is a super simple strategy where I'm just rolling higher. And if I can keep doing this, then I can continue making uh, the easiest 11 to, no, e yeah, easiest $11,000. Like, it's it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, now, obviously, this isn't gonna get you to the big money, but this is gonna get you to the most stable real estate, passive income, results and to be honest i'm just gonna break one more secret okay investing is awesome you have to do it it's a no-brainer right and i'm the biggest proponent of investing but to be honest you're not going to take 5k to 5 million just investing like you just can't because it's more of a passive income source it's not an active thing a lot of people want to trade actively you know like in my discord community i'm really blessed because the only people that book a call or click the first link are people that kind of understand my mentality because I don't promise get rich quick. I don't promise short term stuff. So luckily I have the most awesome people booking calls and then they actually get results because I go after the type of person that's like, I want to make money for sure and I want to get rich slowly, not the I want to get rich fast type of person. I don't like that type of person uh, for many reasons, right? A, I don't believe in that at all. Like nothing's fast in life. And then B, I don't want to work with that type of person because, um, for example, like when people end up joining and we figure out a goal, like a lot of people's goals is, well, a lot of people want 10,000 a month, but like we have to be realistic and say, hey, we're gonna make $3,000 a month. And you know, when they make 3,500, they're bragging. They're like, I made 3,500, they're bragging. That's fantastic. But if I'm like, hey, we're gonna make 20K and the guy makes 3K, he's upset at me. Even though he made 3K more, he made $3,000 more in this 30 day period than he would have, but he's upset. Why? Because the expectations are wrong. His expectations are wrong, and I'm doing a disservice by lying to him and telling him he can make 20,000, which he can't, right? So just honestly there. But essentially, this is a boring strategy that works, okay? SPY, covered call, boring strategy, 
Um, you know, let, leave me a comment if you want another video on the boring stuff that I'm doing on my portfolio, but a lot of my portfolio is in SPY covered calls. And if you are trying to be a covered call millionaire and this is the only strategy that you wanna to use to grow your wealth passively and consistently, then you have to watch my video on covered call millionaire.